Welcome to my channel. I'm Scott, and if you want to catch my newest video, I post one every day at 8 a.m. In this video, I am going to walk you through the process of valuing Shopify stock by analyzing their financial statements and dissecting their financial ratios so we can determine if it's a buy or sell. Shopify is a Canadian e-commerce company headquartered in Ontario. It allows anyone to set up an online store and sell their products. Businesses can also sell their own products in person with Shopify POS. Shopify offers online retailers a suite of services including payments, marketing, shipping, and customer engagement tools. It has more than 1 million businesses in 175 countries using its platform. Let's get started with the model. This is a large cap company, market cap $147 billion. They're trading at $11.97 a share and they have 110 million shares outstanding. Let's look at the financials. The way you value a company is you forecast the future free cash flows and then you discount that number back to today's value. That's what we're doing in this video. And free cash flow is cash flow from operations minus capital expenditures. So you can see the company recently started generating positive free cash flow. Net income is the profit and loss on the income statement. It's revenue minus expenses and they have negative net income every year. Revenue is a sales for the company and it's growing at a rapid pace. 673 million all the way up to 2.1 billion in just three years. This is the company's income statement. The top line is the revenue, the sales. Below that is cost of revenue. The difference between those two numbers is the gross profit. So you can see their gross profit is over $1 billion in the trailing 12 months. But they're a young growing company, so they're investing a lot back into their business. So their operating expenses are higher than their gross profit. So they have negative operating income each year. They also have interest on their debt and a small amount of other income and expenses. So they do report negative net income every year. But it's likely they're going to turn a profit in the next two to three years. Here's a breakdown of their revenues. On the top is a breakdown by subscriptions and merchant solutions. So to be on a platform, businesses pay a subscription fee each month and they earn $642 million in 2019, up from $464 million. They earn more revenue from merchant solutions. This is mainly from credit card fees, but there's also shipping fees and other fees involved. And that was $935 million. That's up from $608 million. This is a Canadian company, but the bulk of their revenue is from the U.S. One billion in the U.S., up from 755 million. They have 100 million in Canada, 100 million in the U.K., 68 million in Australia, and 230 million in the rest of the world. All their numbers are up from 2018. But for the rest of the world, 12% of their revenue was in 2018, and it's up to 14.6%. So they're doing a good job diversifying their brand to other countries. This is the company's statement of cash flows. The top line is operating cash flow. That's how much money the company generates from its operational business. Then you have capital expenditures. This is investments in property, plant, and equipment. To calculate free cash flow, it's operating cash flow minus CapEx. And they started generating free cash flow in trailing 12 months and 2019. They did have negative in 2017 and 18. So since the company just started generating positive free cash flow, they needed money from somewhere to run the business. So they've been issuing a lot of capital stock, half a billion in 2017, 1 billion in 2018, 688 million in 2019, and 2.1 billion in trailing 12 months. And the company hardly uses any debt to run its business. Whenever you invest in a company, you should make sure they have positive operating cash flow or at least the potential to be positive because if it's not, you can't really run a business if it's negative for too long. The company is generating positive operating cash flow since 2017 and it seems to be growing at a pretty rapid pace. It was $103 million in a trailing 12 months. The way you calculate operating cash flow, you start with net income, which was negative 67 million. Then you have to add back the non-cash items from the income statement. They reported a $55 million depreciation expense, which was a non-cash item, so we have to add that back. But they reported a tax credit of 51 million, so we have to reverse that out. So it's negative 51 million deferred taxes. And usually when companies don't generate a lot of money, they subsidize their employees' salaries with stock-based compensation. And this was $204 million, so we have to add that back. Then they also had negative $89 million of working capital. This is changes in accounts payable, accounts receivable, inventory. Their operating cash flow looks really good and expected to grow a lot more in the future. 
Let's look at a capital structure. They have $3 billion of equity, $152 million of debt, and they have more than enough cash on their balance sheet to pay down their debt. Their WAC is 14.13%, which is a blend of the cost of equity and cost of debt, and that's a discount rate we're going to apply to the future cash flows. We estimated four years of future free cash flows. We also estimated terminal value, which is all cash flows past year four, that's $128 billion. We discounted those numbers back to today using the weighted average cost of capital. We get a value of the company of $79 billion. We divide that by 110 million shares. And we get a calculated stock price of $722. They're trading at $1197, so they're trading at a 66% premium. It's a sell according to the model. Simply Wall Street's at 514, so they're also saying the stock is overvalued. This is not to say the stock price cannot go up. These are just projections of how the future free cash flow is going to be. The stock price is based off the of supply and demand of the market. If investors feel the stock is worth $1,500, $2,000, they'll keep driving the price higher and higher. This is the stock price the last five years. If you ever look on a graph of exponential growth, it looks like this. So the stock price has really been driven up the past year. If you bought the stock down here, you're doing really well in your investment. This company has never paid a dividend and doesn't plan on paying dividends in the future. It plans to retain all its funds to grow the business. If you invested $10,000 into this company when it IPO'd five years ago, you'd have over $700,000 today. The stock has a beta of 1.63, so it's a bit more volatile than the market. And the stock price has gone up 200% in the past 52 weeks much better than S&P 500 at 15%. The 52 week low was 305, the high was 1206. And the stock is trading above its 50 day moving average and 200 day moving average, so it's on a major uptrend. And when the 50 day moving average moves above the 200 day moving average, that's considered the golden cross. There's about one and a half million shares that are traded each day for this stock. So it is a low trading volume, but that's because the stock price is so high. And almost all the shares outstanding are on float. And this stock is bullish by institutions because 67% of the shares outstanding are held by them. And it has a pretty low short percentage, 2.38% of the shares are shorted. The majority of its customers pay $50 a month to be on a platform. And it's used by 175 countries, 52% in the US, 7% in UK, 6% in Canada, 6% in Australia, and 29% in the rest of the world. So this article explains what Shopify is in a simple way. Shopify is an online store that you can add to your website so people can buy things. So say you have a website or blog or anything and one day you wanted to add something to it so people can start buying things like merch. What you would do is you would add or integrate Shopify into your website. Once you do that you allow people to go to your online store so they can buy accessories, add things to a cart, and also pay. But no one would know this is Shopify, they would think this is part of your website. If you sold items on Amazon, everybody would know you're on Amazon, but it's not like that with Shopify. No one would know you sell things through Shopify. Let's look at the financial ratios. The average PE in the market is 12.1. The median is 14.7. PE is stock price over earnings per share. They have negative PE since they have negative net income. Price to sales is stock price over sales per share. They're at 63.3, so they're doing much worse than the median and average. Price to book is stock price over book value per share. They're at 43.7, also much worse than the median average. And to calculate book value per share, that's equity over shares outstanding. Equity is assets minus liabilities in the balance sheet, and they have $3 billion of equity. They have $2.5 billion of tangible equity. So they have about half a billion dollars of intangible assets on their balance sheet as a result of their acquisitions. ROE is net income over equity. They have negative net income, so negative ROE. Current ratio is current assets over current liabilities. They're at 8.7, so they have a ton of current assets on their balance sheet. And a majority of their current assets are cash of $2.5 billion. They have so much cash on their balance sheet from their stock offerings. And they're really well capitalized. They did have positive free cash flow, but they have $2.4 billion of working capital. The best way to look at ratios to compare them to similar companies, I've done videos of 22 companies in the same industry as Shopify, and Shopify is right here. If they have a number in red, they're worse than the average. If they have a number in green, they're better than the average. So of course they're worse in PE because they haven't earned any money yet. They're much worse in price to sales and price to book. They're doing really well in current ratio. 
They have negative ROA, but that's better than the average, which is negative 9%. They're really low in debt. They don't use much debt to run their business. And they're a huge company, $147 billion market cap, and they don't pay a dividend. So to summarize, I think this company has a great future. They offer an amazing product, and I think they'll continue to grow. Right now, I do think the stock is overvalued, but I wouldn't be surprised if in a year or two, I did another video and said they were undervalued once they come out with new numbers. But based off of the information I have, it seems like they're overvalued. Let me know what you think. Give this video a like, subscribe, or comment below. Also, if you'd like to get a custom valuation or just support the channel, you can become a member by clicking on the link in the description below. Thanks for watching.